Hey everyone, we are squarely within the fourth quarter of 2020 and so now is a perfect time to look at the real estate market in Portland, Oregon, take a look back at the year and figure out what has been happening and where are we going. I'm Alex Roy, trusted realtor with John L. Scott Real Estate in Eastside Portland and in this short video I'm going to take you through a whole bunch of very interesting metrics I think you're going to find very fascinating and lots we can learn from them. Looking at detached single family home sales, condo sales and little talk about interest rates. Give you some very good information if you are a seller or a buyer or you're just curious about what the heck is happening in Portland, Oregon. So if you're ready, let's begin. Okay, to start with, Let's take a look at new listings. Here we got a graph that's going all the way back into 2017, three years worth of data. And as you can see, here it's showing how many new listings are coming on the market, homes being put up for sale. And this is all single family detached dwellings of all price ranges across the Portland metro area. Portland, Gresham, Milwaukee, Beaverton, Gladstone, Westland, Lake Oswego, all of them included in this. And you can see, that there is a yearly cycle to when people put homes on the market. You know, it is hits its low right before December and peaks up sometime right around May. And pretty much every year it's peaking at May and then starting to drop off. Still lots of uh, new listings coming on, but dropping off until again in right around November time got the lowest point of new homes coming on the market. So what happened this year? Everything looking total status quo through 2017 into 2018 into 2019 and then bam, what's that right there? That's March 2020 when COVID truly hit and we had our shutdown across straight state across the country, sudden drop, hold off in home sales. Of course, there's some coming on because people were getting ready to sell, still gonna push ahead, but we saw that sharp drop. But look at that, as soon as we got through a bit of the lockdown, a couple months, realtors and sellers starting to figure out how do we work within this COVID environment, those new listings, peak back up again. Not as strong as they were in past years, but we are getting new listings. But what does that mean if we're lower than last year? It means we have an inventory shortage. And so let's check this out. Now we move to home sold. I've still got on the dotted line the new listings coming on, but the new line that we see here are the homes sold, the ones that are closing. And as you can see, every year, uh, let's say start of the year, the new uh, listings are going up and the number of homes that are being sold is increasing along with it. Not as many as the new listings. That means that there's a bunch of inventory that's sitting around there, not getting sold at that time, might end up getting taken off the market or eventually getting sold later on. And as the year moves on, getting close into winter, the new listings are falling, the inventory that didn't get sold then is starting to get eaten up, and then we come to a point at, at a certain point of the year, you see where there's more homes being sold than homes coming on, some of that inventory that was hanging around, maybe it's going at a deal, uh, or it's just taking long enough to find that right buyer, it's getting sold. And so we see that trend, pretty much the same, but check this out, this year, homes sold, by June of this year was outpacing the last two years and even though this new listings had not dropped way down to this lower level which is about um, 2,000 uh, homes being put on the market, our sales met it way up here, uh, up around the uh, 3,250 homes. And so there you can see there was a big demand from buyers to pick up whatever is out there even though it is a low inventory. That is a frenzied market. That is huge, huge buyer demand, which means that it's a seller's market. You put that home on, much better chance of it getting sold. So that's what we're seeing, the story with new homes uh, coming onto the market and the buyer activity. Now let's take a look at average days on market because the next question is how long is it going to take me to sell my house, get an offer once I put it on the market. That's, a, that's the average days on market, days on market, time you list to the time you accept an offer. Now 
for all these detached single family homes, I'm not talking about condos, just the homes, you can see the same cyclical effect happening every year going back into 2017. It takes longer to sell a home in those winter months than it does when you're putting it on in the summertime. Lots of inventory going up there, but that's when all that buyer activity is and everybody's getting excited. They're out looking for homes. And so homes on average were getting sold you know, right around the 30 days on market uh, point. Certainly lots below that. This is the average. What happened this year? Not too far off from the other ones. Still right around the same kind of averages, maybe a little bit quicker, but not too different than what we saw in 2018, which was a crazy busy year. But uh, de definitely, you know, not much faster. There's still stuff that if it's not priced right, it is not going to sell right away. So we're seeing the same effect right there. But check this out. It is a different story depending on the price class of home. And so in this next chart, the dotted line are the average days on market for homes from 400 to 1.2 million, 400,000 to 1.2 million, and then the dotted line are for all the homes that are less than 400,000. If it is a cheaper home, a less expensive home, it is going faster, easily faster. And so, for example, just in July of this year, the homes that were um, uh, up above 400,000, that was an average of 35 days on market, whereas if it was below 400, 400,000, that was only 22 days on market. Bam, like it's a significantly shorter time. And hey, if you're a buyer that's been sitting on the sidelines, clicking on Zillow or on one of uh, our John L. Scott web search sites, and you're looking at new listings coming on in a price point that works for you, maybe that's $350,000, you're seeing stuff going pending in four or five days. It comes on on Thursday, they do showings through the weekend, by Monday, they're saying they've got multiple offers and they're getting that offer five days after being on market, going under contract. So that is definitely the experience that many buyers had throughout this summer. And if a home is priced right and it is in an area that people want, that is going to continue, I believe, on into winter. And my prediction is we are not going to see those days on market spike up as high as we have in past years simply because the shortage of our inventory. Unless we get a load more homes on the market to really catch up, we're going to see whatever homes are out there getting snapped up by the buyers. So that, that's what we learned from our average days on market. Once again, a great seller's market. Months inventory is another metric that realtors really like to look at. And this is what months inventory means. If you suddenly stopped bringing new homes on the market and we're just stuck with whatever we have on the market, how long would it take to sell all those homes based on the current buyer activity? And then we rate that in months. So if it's a high number like six months to sell off all those homes, that, that means that it's leaning a little bit more, getting a bit more to a buyer's market, tough to move it. But if it's a low number, like down at one or two or three, that's a seller's market. It means stuff is moving real fast. And we have seen days on market move. I remember back in 2017, 2018, we were like, holy mackerel, look at this. Like we're dropping below two months inventory. That is crazy low inventory and as we went through 2018, we spiked, we, everybody, all the sellers caught on, it was like, yeah, you can sell your home, prices are appreciating really great, it can move quickly, so we had a lot more inventory come on. This is also a time when interest rates started to get to be at their highest as they were in the last four or five years, and so the buyer demand dropped off a little bit, things are hanging around, and then we're kind of playing around, yeah, all in the same kind of area through 2019 into 2020, and then, Bam! Look what's been happening this year. So, and this goes along with the new homes coming on market and then that buyer demand, those two meeting right there, this is what you get, that low inventory. And now we are at the crazy low number of 1.2 months inventory. And that's what we saw uh, last month with the buyer activity. It is crazy low inventory, very good for sellers putting that house out there. If you've got it priced right, you're looking at a multiple offer situation. And if you're pricing a little bit high, there is that much more of a chance that you might 
get the price that you're looking for when it is a very ambitious, uh, leading the market price, I like to say. All right, let's take a look around the whole Portland metro area to find out what areas are hot and what areas are not. I used to play this game all the time for those of you that have been following my YouTube channel for the last three years. Love to play the map game and figure out what areas uh, have the highest average sales prices. And we divide it up this way. We've got North Portland, Northeast Portland, Southeast Portland, West Portland, Raleigh Hills, uh, Lake Oswego, West Lynn, Tiger, Twalton, Sherwood, Beaverton, Aloha, out that way, Gresham, Troutdale, up here, uh, Milwaukee, Clackamas, and Oregon City. I feel like a weatherman as I'm standing in front of this. Love it. All right, first let's look at just right in the uh, thick uh, Portland uh, city proper area. North Portland, 440,000 was the average sales price last month. And so in the month of September, that's what the average sales price was. Northeast Portland uh, staying very strong at 486,000. Southeast Portland, 422,000. And West Portland, 553,000, the average home sales price. That in the Raleigh Hills, obviously some um, uh, much more leaning towards expensive large homes in this area, far fewer smaller homes to balance out that average. And then expanding out to the other areas, not to confuse you with too many bubbles here, as you can see on the screen, Gresham Troutdale at 389, expecting that to be a little bit lower on the average than the, the closer in east side. Milwaukee Clackamas 460, beating out southeast Portland. Oregon City 440, also beating out southeast Portland. Lake Oswego West Lynn, looking to be our most expensive area of all at 680. Twal Tiger Tualatin 495, and Beaverton Aloha. 430. All right, that's all well and good. Alex, I see where there are cheaper homes and where there are more expensive homes. Which areas have appreciated? I want some of you that were thinking about buying or did buy, and you were searching around a couple years back thinking, mm, what area of town are we gonna see the most growth, the most, most appreciation in home values? Uh, when I was looking at this data, it kind of surprised me yesterday, so I'm excited to uh, show this to you. Check this out. The number that I've got on top is today's value, and the number colored in orange to uh, magenta uh, below it is the value that it was in September, the average sales price in September 2019. So after one year, how much did that average go up? And check these out around town. All right, west side and the orange showing that it did not appreciate a whole bunch. Uh, the average only went up 3,000. Not much appreciation at all in the west side and the Raleigh Hills. Already pretty strong, not too much further to go. Less demand for the really big older homes that require more upkeep and far higher property tax in that area. That's just off the top of my head, one of the reasons, uh, a couple of reasons why that one probably didn't appreciate it as much. And the big winner on appreciation, this, this blew me away. I guess there was a lot of room to move on this down in the Westland, Lake Oswego area from 595 last year up to 680. That's huge. $85,000 average sales price appreciation in one year. In one year. And then around the area, you got a bunch of others that are uh, pretty good. Southeast Portland was also a little bit minimal at 32,000, but still 32,000 average uh, price appreciation across to uh, the you know 2020. I you read on social media of people across the country chiming in that. Oh, you know, when uh, videos go out trying to sell homes in Portland, the nation chiming in going, oh my goodness, I wouldn't buy a house in Portland right now. The city's burning to the ground. Clearly, that has, that's not happening, and it's not affecting the real estate market. Homes are moving, buyer demand is here, and home prices are appreciating as a result. So very interesting when we are looking around the area. Okay, but let's move into a little bit more specific map to figure out where are some of these price brackets of homes. And here we see a screenshot of uh, one of my favorite search maps, and that is the John L. Scott search map. You just go ahead to my site, alexroyrealty.com, and click or click the link in the description below and check out the, the map search. I find it a lot easier to work through with more criteria filters than Redfin and Zillow. Give it a try, you're gonna love it. And so here we can see uh, these are all the active listing for single family homes from uh, below 450,000. We've got the downtown Portland right there, north 
northeast, southeast, getting all the way out into the Gresham area. Uh, there's the 205 right there and the 84. And so you can see that th this is all of them. This is all the active inventory and new listings. I wouldn't be able to fit them all on this map on other years, but we have such low inventory right now. They can actually all be seen on, on this map. And you can see it's, it's up into uh, the St. John's area, the North Portland area, way off into Cully up there, uh, some in the Rose Park area, Area, certainly getting out into Rockwood and Centennial areas and then certainly down into the deep southeast area uh, Lentz, Brentwood, Darlington we've got a lot of homes under 450 not a whole lot when you're heading out to the west side Raleigh Hills and uh, southwest Portland but as we shift to 450 to 750 so you know squarely uh, just above that average sales price loads more all through here in the close in southeast area lots right around the Mount Tabor area Sunnyside Richmond areas uh, lots around the Woodstock area getting into uh, East Moreland there uh, certainly uh, uh, and stuff in Selwood and then you do see a lot more up in the Raleigh Hills uh, area. And of course, a few out here, these are larger homes. There is new construction out in this area and certainly lots down in the, the Happy Valley area. And then we, we flip to 750 up to 1.2. 1.25, where do we see those? Almost none out east of the 84. All of these very expensive homes, there we now see them in the West Hills area, up into uh, the Heights area, and um, lots in close in Northeast and Southeast Portland. This, lots of great new construction around the Woodstock and uh, East Moreland area. That's what's counting for these higher end home prices. So one quick second to, we can see how the uh, more affordable homes out east, and as we raise up in price, those homes come in tighter and tighter into the east side towards the downtown. Understandable. Certainly if you live here in Portland, you understand that. I think that's a really good overview for those of uh, you that are maybe um, uh, live outside of Portland and are thinking about moving here and just getting a better sense of the area. All right. Now I want to switch over to condos, condo time. It is a very different market for condos than it is for detached homes. And frankly, it's just a slower market. Condos are moving much slower. And so what I want to show here is average sales price. And here I've got a line on condos starting at 300,000 there back in 2017. And what I'm looking at here is how much of the condos appreciated over the last three years. And we can see that they did appreciate pretty good and there were some good spikes in them through uh, the end of 2018 and uh, mid or during the frenzy time of 2019. They dropped off and they leveled off again. And so when you're looking at that three year, there is not much of an upward trend. Condos have not appreciated well in value in the Portland area. Though they still continue to have an upward trend, I have had um, buyers who are thinking about maybe purchasing condos uh, in Portland tell me as far back as two years ago when there's a drop coming in the condo price, there's a drop coming in the condo price. We're not seeing that yet. All we are seeing is that they're holding steady and going up slightly but not as much as homes are because let me show you, there's our comparison right there, the houses. Now obviously the houses are going to have a higher average sales price uh, because there are far more $900,000 million houses, $800,000 houses than there are condos. Condos are just typically gonna be around this three hundred to $400,000 mark. That's just by the nature of their size how it is. But we do see a much more consistent upward trend in the appreciation of houses than we do in the condos. And with this lower, check that out, how that average sales price uh, of the houses uh, really, really is jumping in that last little bit. Uh, it's jumping up. All right. And so let's finish up with uh, talking about interest rates, which are a huge driver of that crazy buyer frenzy. All right, here we've got uh, from Freddie Mac, I'm just, I'm not a lender, so I am not quoting rates to you. I am just pulling this graph uh, right off the Freddie Mac site. Uh, this is the weekly average as of uh, October 8th. 
And what we are seeing here is going back to November 2017, the three years that I've been doing in the same in the other graphs. And you can see that interest rates were pretty fantastic. The blue line being a 30-year uh, fixed rate mortgage, what is the most uh, common. And then um, the green being a 15-year fixed rate and the orange being a 5-1 um, adjustable rate mortgage. A little less common, a lot of people doing the 15 or the 30. And let's talk about the 30 being the most common for most of you. And so that was below four, doing great. That is a great low historical rate back in uh, 2017. And we were all a little bit bummed as that creeped up through uh, 2018, that rate was going up. You know, uh, economy was doing good during that time. We had that that uh, uh, strength in the market that could demand that, and it pulled back buyer spending a little bit. We saw that effect in the previous slides, but look how that has been dropping all through 2019. It was getting crazy by the end of the year, dropping off hard by mid-year. And then here's our little spike. As soon as things got a little bit freaky with COVID and scare of the markets, we had this sudden drop and some really crazy volatility right at that time. But since then, wow, we have done some final dropping and now the number being quoted there, uh, 2.87 on the Freddie Mac site. That is crazy low money. It is practically free money to borrow. And this is a big driver of people buying homes. And so if you're a buyer that is watching this, you've got to understand that at this point, you, let's say that you've got the same monthly budget, you've got the same down payment that you had uh, two years ago. You, because it's cheaper to borrow money, you can afford to buy more home with this interest rate than you could back right at the end of 2018. Almost two years ago, you can definitely buy more home now. And so be, feel not discouraged that home prices have appreciated over that time uh, and have caught up. You're, it's being balanced out by the fact that it is cheaper for you to buy that house because the interest that rate, uh, the interest that you have to pay to the bank is less. It's almost like you're shopping again in 2018 with 2018 prices. All right, sit down, talk to your lender about that. And if you need lender recommendations, just give me a call. I know a bunch of great lenders in town that would love to work with you. If you've got a particular style, I can help match you to just that right lender that's right for your situation, whether it is a commercial, multifamily, condo purchases, single family home purchases. Maybe you're struggling with a bankruptcy. I know lenders that can work with people with bankruptcy on their history, no problem there. All right, so what are our next steps forward? If you are, if you are a seller and you've been thinking about maybe it is time to list your home, what's the first step? It's simply give me a call, send me an email, send me a text. All my contact information is in the description of this video below. What you want to get is a comparative market analysis done on your home. Find out from an expert what could I list my house for today? What do we think we could sell it for? And what are maybe some of the improvements that we maybe want to do on that home? I'm really happy to say John L. Scott has some very cool programs going on right now, and we are now able to offer to uh, qualified sellers based on the net equity in your home, you may be eligible for a up to 3% of your home's net value, a 3% advance of money. So that could be as much as like $10,000, $12,000 uh, for, for most homes there, um, where you could use that money to do improvements on the home uh, to get it market ready, whether it's getting a full interior painting, changing out some really bad carpet, uh, maybe doing some repairs on the roof or siding, dry rot, on the front porch. If you don't have the cash to get that ready, but it could add value to your home and help your home sell more, we can probably advance you that money and just get reimbursed when the home sells. So that's our, our market ready uh, program and I really wanna talk to you sellers about that. But just give me a call, send me an email or a text, happy to chat with you about that. And if you are a buyer, what do we do? You just, we just need to sit down and chat about your needs and your goals. We need to have a buyer consultation. So once again, pick up the phone, give me a call, send me a text or an email. 
ask me your questions that you have about the process. I love educating buyers on what the landscape is like out there, how to write the best offer to make sure it gets accepted in a multiple offer situation. Love going around touring homes with you. And so if you are a buyer, I wanna meet you. I wanna to tour homes with you. I'm Alex Roy, trusted realtor in Eastside Portland with John L. Scott Real Estate, working hard for your success.